Hello and welcome to the VR Untethered podcast, your weekly source of untetheredness that is untethered and definitely not tethered in any sort of way, even though it sort of looks like I'm, I'm tethered to my computer with a headphone cord. I'm, I'm actually not tethered. Uh-huh. I can pull away at any moment. Okay, show me. I just did. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> it was very fast. You're good. You've been practicing. Yes. So, I'm not Brad, and that's not Josh. And neither of us are famous. Yet. You, you can help us become famous, though. If you right. like and subscribe and tell everybody else to. But we are. That'd be very helpful. It would. Especially, it would, might get that guy that's behind you from attacking. I see he's uh, holding... He's, He's a friendly guy. He's friendly. Well, I see he likes to pose for pictures. Yes. He's got a gun in his hand because he wants to protect me, not because he wants to shoot me. Of course. That's why I have the gun in my hand, so that if I ever see you, I can protect you. Yes. That's why you're over there and I'm here. But I'm not. I'm reaching through the screen. Don't you see my hand and my flash? So, anyways, um, we have news, news, and more news, and some stuff that's not news as well, like uh, get new releases and get upcoming releases. Wow, that's hard to say. <laughs> um, actually, no, you just have to add a G in front of everything, and you <laughs> got, got it. <laughs> so. so so, so, do you have any highlights this week, Brad? I do have highlights this week. Um, I am really looking forward to season two of Pop One going Western. That's pretty exciting. I like yeah. the steampunk train. I, I, it's interesting. I, I think the guys at Pop One are just fantastic now. Yeah. Um, They're doing a good job of keeping that content rolling. Yeah, rolling, rolling. Uh, it's interesting the way that they're going to get everybody back into Dead and Buried. Well, it's going to make Dead and Buried look pretty boring, I think. <laughs> After this, it's, I don't think. What do you mean? I don't think there'll be a resurrection. I was thinking maybe, but that's going to be the third release: Dead and Buried: The Resurrection. <laughs> Isn't that kind of what it already is? Um. I don't it or was doesn't even play. was supposed to be it was supposed Origi to be the resurrection of the game. It was supposed to be the intro to the quest two and the not yeah. the death knell of the anyway. Um it is interesting to see everything that's now coming out for Quest Two, which is not supposed to be allowed, but has jumped the tracks and they don't even hide it now, so it's good. It's good that the graphics are improving, and I have no idea what the Star Wars Day bundle actually goes for, because when I looked at it, they're still charging the same price if I want to buy the pinball game, <laughs> since I own everything else. <laughs> so, right. Um, usually, yeah, um, a couple of bucks. Yeah, I only own Galaxy's Edge, so I'd see closest to the actual price if I looked at the store. But I wouldn't see the actual price either because I own one of the titles in the bundle. Right. Well, yeah, my price was the same price as Pinball, buddy. We ain't giving you a break. We already know you own those. <laughs> yeah. My price it's an interesting... is thirty nine ninety eight for the Star Wars Day Pack, which has Pinball, Galaxy Dead, and all three episodes of Vader Immortal. That's a very good deal, though. That really is. Yeah. If you don't know those, that's a great deal. Yeah. The only problem is, still, uh, I mean, it's good that it's no longer $30 for all three episodes of Vader Immortal. It's more like $10 for all three episodes. That, in my opinion, that's kind of what it should have been in the first place. Because it, it, it adds up to, like, the length of a short to medium length movie which would be 10 to 15 dollars so for the tickets 
more than that if you include all the drinks and the snacks and everything else. But you know, so. <laughs> right? And I was, you know, but it was also was, uh, you know, magic, uh, industrial light magic, and right. the whole, right. you know. So yeah, but that price is much better than charging me full price for the pinball game when they want to give you. Uh, seriously, forty bucks. They're going to give you ninety dollars worth of games, and for twenty five dollars, they'll give me twenty five dollars worth of games. So, um, not much of a Star Wars sale for me, <laughs> but for everybody so, that doesn't know. It. Yeah. So, anyways, um, obviously, some of the news we are going to be talking about today is the Star Wars Day Sales Bundle. <laughs> and one well, of oh. the new releases we're going to be talking about today is the Star Wars pinball, <laughs> which we did discuss last week as well. So, yeah. so uh, um, it's not getting great reviews. Um, there it, seems to be yeah. a, a mixed reaction to the graphics as well. I'm reading where people are saying this looks like crap, and other people are saying I don't know what these people are talking about. It's gorgeous, and I'm thinking. I think what? it's all in the eye of the beholder, you know, and, and what they are expecting. Uh, but before we get into more detail on that, uh, my highlights of the week were encountering this guy behind me. Yeah, I could see that being uh, an experience that you wouldn't forget within a week's time. <laughs> um, I've been playing Wraith the Oblivion afterlife and at one point in the game you have to start recovering all of the special items that were used in the seance and as you are hunting for one of them you encounter this guy now the game says it does not rely on jump scares and it it really doesn't most of it is just creepy a creepy atmosphere and atmospheric sound and music and periodic chase scenes, which are not jump scares because you know they are coming, you know. But his appearance, honestly, was a little bit of a jump scare because you are reaching out for an item, and all of a sudden you hear a voice saying, "Arkley, is that you?" And you turn around, and there he is behind you. He and then he vanishes after like half a second. I'd rather have him vanish after half a second than go to hug me. So I guess it's not really a jump scare so much as it is just a horrifying second of your life. Well, later on, he wants to hug you with his gun. Yes. Okay. Interesting. He wants to send a ninety-five mile an hour Hershey's kiss your way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Actually, those it'd, be more than that. it'd be more like uh, 300 miles an hour Hershey's kiss your way. Well, you know, they're not too damaging at five miles an hour, but that propulsion, that could, that tinfoil would hurt. Yeah. The milk chocolate probably would still dissolve in your mouth. And No, that's m and I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess it depends well, yeah, upon... It's, um, it's a good game. It's... Um... Uh, I've noticed in uh, a couple other streamers' uh, videos that occasionally the subtitles in the game mess up sometimes. I haven't had that happen, but I have seen that someone else doing the exact same thing thing I'm doing has doors unlocked. Whereas for me, at the same point in the game, they are still locked. And I'm not sure if maybe uh, he did something I didn't that I didn't see, or you know, or, or if there's an element of, of randomness. In it. I don't know. Um, well, if there's an element of randomness, it would just be uh, procedurally generated. And well, it, yeah. It's a and, I mean... The plot is not procedurally generated, and and the challenges are not. So it's kind of leading me to believe that either there was a bug, or I missed something that he didn't miss. Right. Well, if you've ever played Doctor Who, you'll realize that bugs abound in some of these games. And true, I I have played Doctor Who, 
but not the Quest version of it. I played the Steam version of it. Mm, I tried playing this. Which, which had its own bugs, you know. That's nice. It's good that the Doctor has his own bugs in different universes, but um, the one in the Quest universe is really buggy, and it just amazes me how somebody like Population One can give you this game that's outrageous from day one and make it better, and these other people give you a game that's bug-laden from day one. BBC, no less. The BBC gives you a game that doesn't work based on their most popular television character ever created by the BBC, and they don't fix it. I know. I know. I don't know. So, yeah. And then you have games like uh, Aspire 1 that started out buggy. I mean, really buggy. And they fixed it. I mean, it still got a few bugs, but now it's worth uh, saying it's a recommended title. You know? Whereas when it first came out, it really wasn't the recommended title. Right, exactly. You know, but, and I think that is the, that's the major issue that we're running into, is who's going to continually develop for the game and yeah. who's going to take your money and leave you with whatever you got. Right. So it's not just what game you get. It's like the headset. We bought a different headset than we have. The headset we, ha- we bought was not a wireless 120 hertz headset. No. Well, with wireless, but yeah. You know what I mean, a wireless connection to your PC uh, headset. So everything that's happened to it, the only thing is, is one article which I read, which really was kind of on the money, that said that it really is so uncomfortable in its design that it, it had to be done on purpose because it's really hard to design something that uncomfortable when you did so well with the first one. So I think that they put a few... Um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's less comfortable than the Quest 1. Uh, I think it is in the sense that the Quest 1, you were able to adjust your vision a little more accurately. So well, where... that, yeah. So, I mean, it, it did have a little bit more more IPD adjustment options, yeah. But, but as far as the comfort... No, no. The IPD, though, is different depending on where you wear your... The well, sweet spot's yeah. going to still be different now because it's changed from being absolutely localized where you need it to in the general vicinity. So you might have to move the headset a little bit, which is not in your comfort zone, but in the vicinity. I guess that's what I'm getting at, is that... Well, yeah, now, what I mean by by the comfort is not the, the, the IPD adjustment, but the comfort, how it fits on your head. You know, and I, I, that... To me, I don't think they did worse on than the than the Quest One the, the way that it feels on your head. But I do agree that the IPD adjustment could be improved, um, and I prefer, even though it did mess up at, at times, and the periodically just moving your head like that would to make it adjusted down one millimeter. You know, but I, I do kind of prefer how it was on the Quest 1 with a slider that did a full analog adjustment of the two screens and the lenses and all that. But I can also understand why ergonomic or cost-wise they, they went with what they did. It... it I don't know. Well, but, what, what I'm saying but, though, is uh, depends on... to, to me, that doesn't fall under comfort. That falls under more ergonomics, I guess. Well, ergonomics is kind of comfort, depending on the shape of the head oh. that's wearing it. And if you have to lift it up a little bit and it rests on your cheekbone as opposed to below or... Well, and you know, right now I've got a completely different experience than you because I'm using a Halo style head strap exactly. in, instead of the default elastic or the elite strap. So it fits completely differently. <laughs> Once again, and that's what I'm pointing out, is that the fit is going to be different. So the shape of your head has not really been taken into consideration. Somehow or other, there it should be more moldable, I think, is bottom line. Um, I should 
Yeah. Have to I mean, deal with the. Maybe at at some point in the far distant Doctor Who inspired or Doctor Who Doctor Who inspired the, the future, we will have VR headsets that you go uh, like this, and then it automatically molds itself perfectly to your face. Or that you don't even have to do this; it's already there. You just tap the right. button on your suit, and it just uh, the, <laughs> right. The button right there and the, it's a third eye spot. Exactly. <laughs> or the neural link and you don't have to go all the way back there yeah. and, and just say, Alexa, activate neural link. <laughs> or go, neural link on. <laughs> exactly. And we're into Lost in Space, which is perfect from this. <laughs> um, I like those helmets. I thought that was very cool. <laughs> so anyway. Hey, Moving on to, to new releases, officially, Star Wars Pinball, new release, um, mixed reviews, um, it looks like if you are into pinball and collectible stuff, it, the gameplay is fun, where I've heard that is dropping the ball some, pun kind of sort of not intended um is the graphics yeah gee why would that be a problem in star wars and a game made by industrial light and magic um yeah and they don't really talk about the graph well the thing that throws me is they all agree that the graphics on the collectibles needs an upgrade no two ways but they all agree on that mm -hmm. It's the difference in their version of the graphics of the table. Because all of them seem to have already been playing FX2 pinball right. with Williams tables. And they're saying that the old tables still look better than the new Star Wars tables. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting, because other people are saying, ah, you're crazy. So now I'm wondering, is this a version 28 rollout thing? Is this, I don't, I don't know what this is. So when, I don't know. you know, when, but that's very, very strange to have such a dichotomy. As right. To, and yeah, I really don't know uh, what is set, set behind that. It, um, I don't know if it's an actual objective thing. I don't know if it's just, you know, like, Michael is much more sensitive to the to the latency with the virtual desktop than I am. He can feel it and it throws him off in shooter games, whereas it doesn't throw me off and I still perform just fine. You know, I don't know if it's something like that, that some people are just more noticing, you know, have the graphics and, and others are not, I, you know, I, I don't know. Well, once again, like I said, when you're comparing apples to apples, no pun intended, then uh, that's where it threw me. You know, I could see somebody saying, God, the graphics suck, the graphics are great, and that's just a difference of opinion. But right. when they are saying, these tables look fine, these tables don't. And, you know, right. then it's like, well, now that's a horse of a different color. You know, like, what's right. the issue? What, you know, that's not just subjective. Now there is something going on. So right. that's what I'm more concerned about than as to whether or not I would like the quality of the graphics. You know, if they're a high quality right. graphic, they are. If they're a low quality, they are. That's not the the point is why it is that some people seeing it as being fine and some right. and some people seeing it as being something that's awful, you know. Right. I, I don't know. Um I haven't bought it or played it, so I cannot Coming I, on it firsthand, so I thought I would have had it day one and had my own little Star Wars cave that I'd go into and play the pinball. And after reading the reviews, I decided maybe in a few weeks, after some more reviews, I might have right. it. I've become very much uh, more cautious about the purchases I make. Well, yeah, especially because you're not playing them, so that does make it easier to be more cautious, knowing there's still a dozen games that I haven't touched. Um, yes. Although I am looking at Demio and thinking, wow, if this game is 
ninety percent of what it looks like it could be, it's great. Right. If it's what it could be in terms of bad, it could be horrible, and uh, and it's all going to depend on who you're playing with. Well, yeah, I mean, anything multiplayer depends on who you are playing with, really, ultimately. Well, yeah, but I guess yeah, I guess this is sort of like a more uh, Dungeons and Dragons oriented than a Catan type deal. So it'll be interesting to see how they make it work out because it really basically looks like that's what you're doing is you're playing Dungeons and Dragons well, yeah. in reality with your friends, except now as opposed to imagining the dragon, you're going to see the dragon attack your character, right? right? Which right. would be cool, very cool. Right. It's sort of like Tilt Five, except you could play it not in the same room. <laughs> you know. Well, till five, you can play not in the same room. Well, it's I'm got saying, online connectivity, right? But they had the board. You all need the board. You all need, you know, all of the elements. Well, yeah, but it's get. got online connectivity, so you're not in the same room, right? But go ahead, mock me, mock me, Josh. That's <laughs> what I. Do. That's what I need. Um, as far as new games, other than Star Wars, uh, what have well, I wrote down one that I am intending to check out. I have not yet. Uh, Commodore 64 emulator for Quest. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I just, I really can't. I'm sorry. Uh, I got my Commodore 64 at the same time I was playing my Atari. So, um, I can't. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. It's... What is well, it? Eight? It's it will eight. be interesting because <clears throat> with the current state of VR typing, it'll be just like how I used to type on the Commodore 64. <laughs> I know. That's, I'm, now, I, I'll let you know that the Commodore 64 started my son's career in Azure as an Azure architect. But, right. uh, you know, and it was a big advantage <laughs> over VIC-20. I'll give it that. However... To stick an emulator for the Commodore 64 on my headset is like, why don't you just give me an Abacus emulator <laughs> so I can... Well, because with the Commodore 64 emulator, they have an excuse to, sit, uh, to stick a DeLorean outside of your window. Okay. Um, I don't understand. Because we why. all had those back then. Right. No, no, I do. I everybody, got it. Everybody had one. Right. Even no. me, at eight years old, I had a DeLorean. <laughs> well, in our minds, we did all on the DeLorean. Marty! <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I... Sorry. <laughs> well, no, it's, um, I figured it may be, be interesting to to check it out see how it is and have my son check it out so that he can see what my first computer was like you know yeah, so he could tell you what a piece of crap it was dad and you can move on no um he would probably enjoy it he likes making his phone look like windows 95 sometimes I didn't like Windows 95 looking like Windows 95. Why would anybody do that? that was he, also, he also downloaded um, uh, a Clippy app for his phone. So he got Clippy looking at him all the time. Not Bob? He didn't download Bob? No, he downloaded Clippy. Did you, the other day on, on the Mad Ash, she was showing Bob. I don't know if you remember Bob. Bob, was the, up, Bob, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the most needless way to give you absolutely no communication with your computer and frustrate you to the point of wanting to throw it against the wall. Yes, it was. Yeah. So anyway, that's how I sort of feel about the Commodore sixty four. I loved it when I had it forty yeah. some yeah, I mean, odd fifty. Um, everything's about retro stuff now, but no. Um, it, it mm, might be it'd be interesting for a lark, you know. Yeah, well, I'll so find a lark somewhere. Outside yeah. of that, mm, that's probably not something I would keep long term. And I think you just froze on me. Well, you froze on me, so we're just, you know, going to be. We need to stop this. 
Welcome back from our unexpected technical difficulties. Um, it's I'm that guy behind you. Awesome. Sorry, what? It's the guy behind you. He was Maybe. Missing. Maybe. It, it could be. I, I think it is. It's either that or this guy in front of you who's trying to take your picture. Maybe. So, so um, I'm not entirely sure where we left off, but so basically... Um, so the, the Commodore 64 emulator, I just thought that would be cool for just a fun little trip down memory lane, so sort of be shared with my son, and then probably never ever use it again. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> right. It's pretty much how I look at it. You know, these days I'm looking at a lot of games that way too, but you know, the Commodore emulator. You know, it was a great little piece of equipment 40 years ago. And it was a great intro to the programming because you kind of had to know at least a little bit about programming to even use <laughs> Just it. to get it to work, right. <laughs> you, know, uh, you were just greeted with that little cursor, you know. It's, yep. And, and the disk drive was extra. And this program. <laughs> and remember, the disk drive was extra and a lot more expensive until the Coleco Atom came out and they had to become less competitive. It's pretty funny. Yeah. So anyways, let's move on to upcoming titles while we still can. Okay. We have The Withered Dark Times coming out on May 6th. That should be good, I'm hoping. Yeah. So. It looks yeah. great and I'm sure graphically it's only made for the Quest too, but Quite possibly. But yeah, um, it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. It's one that I've had my eye on for a while <clears throat> because I like the idea of the gesture based spell casting. Right. That does so. sound good. So uh, it would be nice to see actually have a wizard's battle that in a wizard's battle, you know. Right. And unlike Orbis, which technically does have. Um, so Jester based to, to skill, yeah, okay, spell casting. Um, the, the, this stuff is supposed to work a little bit better, right? Yeah, Orbis yeah. is a little finicky and tricky and buggy in the drawing of the rooms and whatnot. You know, it, I mean, it, it's, it's a nice idea <clears throat> and it works. A lot of people are really good at it, but it's it, it's very finicky. Right, and this is made just for that. I mean, let's face yeah. it, the, the mage is just one character in Orbis, whereas here it is the character, so I would assume right. it's going to be a much better use of... Right, and I, I believe... Um, well, in Orbis, it's, just, it's just basically you are drawing patterns in the air with the end of your wand and then and then activating the spell you know right. that, that that's how it works with the rune mage um and this is bigger gestures like which makes more sense that's right. exactly what you would expect not to go like okay let me and a little dot here and a little dot let here let me write my formula on the virtual blackboard right as opposed to being able to summon and summon and which you were still able to do right in that all i forget which game it was like heroes but the one where you could disappear and change your journey of the gods right you know i could see it being somewhat like that incorporating yeah. some of that type of which also as i'm thinking about it was a very unique game with some very unique gameplay yeah. which sort of yeah. disappeared uh, oh. I, I, well, yeah, um, it hadn't really had any uh, major uh, the content updates or whatever, I don't think. So um, I think it's been having the, the, the patches and bug fixes, but I'm not sure if it's had anything more than that. So Right, because if they did a graphical upgrade on that, I think that would really be a big game. Yeah. Again. Yeah, if they brought 120 hertz support to it. Hmm? 120 hertz and then fix some of the graphics or cell shade some, you know, either make yeah. it uglier or prettier or one or the other. And uh, right. I think it's uh, almost like a re-release. I mean, yeah. look at what look at what Synth Riders does. Look at what um, Population yeah. 1 is doing. It's a complete revamp of an already great game as opposed yeah. to a revamp of a crappy game. So right. I, I don't get it. 
you know, right. it's like so. Yeah, and we have another upcoming title that's coming out supposedly in quarter three this year uh, from Joyway, the maker of the Stride, which. Um, um, I forgot to put that in the news, so I'll just mention it here. Stride got approved for the Quest store, so it will be coming to Quest at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not know when as, as, as of this point, but it, it will be coming to Quest, so we will have parkour, parkour on Quest soon. Um, anyways, Joyway is working on um, another game called Against, which is kind of a rhythm parkour shooter Batman game. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> well, you do wall running and you duck under obstacles, dodge, and so it's you Sorrento shoot and you do the combat with uh, the characters and whatnot, and it's all kind of in a very noir-looking environment, you know, a black and white with red accents and whatnot, and um, people who have tried the demo of it have said that it's really fun, it's really cool right now, and it gives kind of uh, Sin City mixed with uh, they mentioned a specific Spider-Man vibes, but it's also kind of like Batman because of the noir element. So, <clears throat> okay. And is rhythm based, which means you're supposed to do everything to okay. the beat, to <laughs> just like um, in Pistol Whip. Yeah, which you don't do. It's... <laughs> I do. Well, I mean, you can, but it's not a necessary component. You know, a lot of these, like Autica. Well, it, it's not necessarily necessary to get past the level and whatnot, but it is necessary if you want the high scores. Right. Oh, yeah. But I'm just saying, people are calling them rhythm games because there's some beat hidden in there, not necessarily beat driven, like, you know, Beat Saber. Right. It, it, it's... The beat Saber, Synth Riders, etc., are beats required. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Whereas a lot of these other games that say that they're rhythm games are. The Piss Whip is more beat inspired. Exactly. Exactly. Very nicely put. Thanks. Whether you are shooting on the beat or not, the, the rhythm drives you to through it. It helps you keep up a, a, oh, yeah. the pace, even if you're not on the beat or not. But some people but, are and very it, doesn't, it doesn't penalize you by going, oh, you you you, you were off beat too many times. Now you're now you're dead. It just right. says, oh no, you should just don't get the top score. That's all. Right, exactly. Um, and if you're good enough visually, some people get the visual cue and don't need the rhythm and bass. So. Well, well, the visual cue is uh, um, still on the beat. It, it's well, showing you the rhythm. Right, but some people are going to pick it up visually, is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, and pick up the cool still visual. a rhythm. This is as much a rhythm. I, as... Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I know that's rhythmic pulsing. <laughs> <and now we're... laughs> Sorry. Oh my God! Really? We're going to go into how our bodies absorb light and reflect. Are we going to? Are we going to go with how sound doesn't actually come in inverted? But never mind. Let's just. But visuals come in. I don't in, even know where you're going with oh, that. Anyway, um, again, has a free demo out. Um, it's yeah, so coming quarter three. It looks like it might be a fun game. This is from the sounds of it. So, if you want to check it out, go check it out. Right. No, no. I, I, if you want to debate about visual versus auditory stuff, go to a different channel because we're not doing that here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our, our discussion of rhythm is now tabled. We are tabling our discussion on rhythm. Um, so. Moving on to the GNU's. Um, HTC is, has announced a private 5G standalone uh, in Kaohsiung City set to focus on 
XR apps. So basically, they are setting up a, a 5G standalone private network and an edge cloud VR solution, which will basically lay down an infrastructure for AR and VR apps in that area over 5G connectivity. Oh, that's great. Uh, by the time it's actually put into place, we'll be on 6G and um, or 8G, depending on just how quickly they're going to work. And okay, it's something. I'm already on 10G. What are you talking about? I'm t- uh, 10. I'm on 14. I knew you were behind. I just didn't know you were that far behind. I didn't want to make you feel bad. Um, <laughs> you, I bet you still have the 2.4 as opposed to the 24 gigahertz and the. Oh. I have 244 gigahertz. Ooh, envy, envy. Um, but what really is amazing, by the way, just as an aside, is the way that they're capping 5G so that everybody's 5G connection is just that much lower than their 4G LTE connection. What, what an advancement. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, yeah, at least we've got 5G, which is faster, except it's not. Except that it is. But it could be. But yeah. they don't want to make it yet. Right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, big news. Uh, Downpour Interactive was acquired by Facebook. I was reading about that. Yeah. Uh, Downpour Interactive is the, de- the de- de- developer behind Onward. Um, one of the... Actually, I think maybe the only real milsim game in VR... And it's certainly one of the most popular uh, VR shooter games. So it's been around for a while. It's in esports. I'm on um, a team in the VRML, which is the Virtual Reality Masters League. Uh, and I had a match yesterday. We're going to have another match later on today. So, wow. That's good. Getting a lot of talent and. Yep. So um, hopefully this um, opens up more opportunities for them, opens up bigger budgets so they can get more stuff done, you know, expand. You know, uh, Facebook at, um, hinted other projects that were unspecified as yet. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would assume that if Facebook is acquiring them and they're going to have them do things other than just Onward. and Well, yeah, uh, but they have acquired Beat Saber, which has only done Beat Saber. So. And tried to make it more. They've True. Not really... They're building on a concept that was really good to begin with. Yeah. So everything that they add to it at this point doesn't really seem as much an addition as a struggle to add an addition. Right. You know, so like it's like adding on something to Monopoly. Monopoly is a great game as it is. What are you going to add? If you add anything, it's probably going to detract from the game. You add Fortnite to it. Wow. That would be one hell of a Monopoly game. <laughs> I think they have done that. <laughs> Oh my God! I, I mean, I'm thinking the only thing that they could do to make Monopoly different is actually use Bitcoin as opposed to Monopoly money, since it's the same thing. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that would that'd be different, yeah. Right. Yeah, but other than that, uh, Monopoly Dogecoin edition. I know. I'm just thinking <laughs> Dogecoin. I swear, dude, it's the same wavelength. I'm thinking Doge. I had to explain Dogecoin to a friend of mine today. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, for anybody that wants not it, a joke coin. <laughs> it is still a joke coin. That's the whole point of this crypto, which is why the Tesla thing makes no sense to me. I have to be very honest with you. I understand that um, crypto, as far as Warren Buffett is concerned, and anyone else who deals in the stock market, oh my God, it really exists. <laughs> 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 Does it come with ammunition, or do you have? I don't to- know. <laughs> I, I thought you were kidding. I, I'm like, okay. Anyway, yeah. So no Dogecoin yet, though. We have to. We can do the Dogecoin edition. Um, yeah, they were just had a show on the other night where they explained that it's the most 
unbelievably gigantic Ponzi scheme ever launched on the face of the planet, and everybody yeah. knows it. And it yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Those going to the moon. Right, I mean... Give me my Lambo. Oh, oh God. I, you know, and just knowing that... Uh, anyway, it's just how Tesla got involved. And Microsoft, I'm just... I'm just... I don't know. I don't know either. But I do know that now we have high-frequency hand tracking available and more and more apps have been adding it. Um, so basically a faster refresh rate on the camera that tracking your hands on the Quest 2, which allows for more stable and more accurate tracking. But do you have to set that up in experimental, or is that just automatic when you um, I think that is implemented by the developers in the apps. Ow. Okay. Um, so, but I, I could be wrong. But I no, it did say, it, did say it, it had to be, but I didn't know if you had to do something in the game as well to... Yeah, I don't believe you do, no. Um, I could be wrong. There may be something in experimental. I forget, but... A lot. I know a lot of things have come up with experimental lately. It's people are still getting version twenty eight rolled out to them, and yeah, pieces of that still rolled yes. out. So. Yep. And I believe Michael uh, tried out the the high frequency hand tracking, and he said it does feel more stable and more accurate, but it's like a ten percent improvement, right? Or something like that. So. It's sort not of a, a huge improvement, but better than incremental. Noticeable, but nothing to right. write about. Got it. Right. But like they said, you know, when they were talking about controllers, about developing new controllers for the um, Quest Pro that we were talking about, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the controllers they have now other than the fact that nobody's developed the proper grip for them. Um, they're designed very well, and they work very well, so... yeah. It's kind of hard to see what they're going to do to make those improve. Well, the only thing that would be better, in, in my opinion, is that something that was on the wrist, right? That that did the whole intent thing that enhanced hand tracking, right? And that still had just something you could hold for a joystick. But that's not coming. You no. Know, so, outside of that. Yeah, uh, what, what, what we have is a separate good solution. Um, although there is one thing that I think could be a, a, a big improvement, but I don't know. Um, there was, we spoke about it many episodes ago. Uh, there was someone working on oh, a well. Steam VR controller that was basically a rod and the uh, and the index cell to, to strap uh, right that had full to finger tracking and it had um, a trackpad up on the top for the to, 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 for the joystick right there's been a few variations oh. and then the one yeah. that has a little like fishing rods on the end right or speed right. map and, yeah and so, so something of that nature that um like okay, slide it on and you know as minimally invasive as it were, you know. <laughs> so, Something highly reflective would be like you're saying motion band detector, and I think that's ninety eight yeah. percent of being there without the force feedback. But they can right. certainly start selling those today. Right. <laughs> and then of course, right. exactly. and, no, and and yeah, I'm having a myo band with the um, intent detection for for the finger tracking combined with so something that you wear over here for the joystick. So that'd be perfect. Exactly. So uh, no, just uh, yeah. just design all of the buttons for in-game buttons. You know, like if you want to pull the trigger, you actually pull the trigger right you know? it feels it and it does it exactly yeah exactly so if you want to interact with the menu you pull up the menu yeah it's actually interact <laughs> and 
Yeah, we're saying it like that, but if somebody who's not quite as dexterous is doing this and one finger moves before the other finger, it could end up interfering with the whole operation as opposed to pushing a well, button. So, Well, still, you know, um, the idea is uh, a sound right. idea. Exactly. In That's my why I mentioned it, but yeah. yes, mine too. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but I, I could see why they would hesitate to implement it quite so quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, that... We'll see. Meanwhile, Pop One launches Western themed season two in May. Hey, I think we already spoke about this a little we bit. We might have mentioned <laughs> it. It's a very cool trailer. I like seeing the spurs on the guy's yeah. boot as he's walking as he's past walking that of, cyber yeah. truck train and you're going, Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Can't wait. Yep. Um so we we will see as the details unfold what all it it brings my guess is Population it's going to be yeah West. it's going to be cool it's going to bring a change look and feel to the uh, existing map it's not going to be a new map it's going to be the same area that's just going to be you know done you know like western stuff well yeah but that's not necessarily the same map. we don't know what they'll do okay they open right. up the tower at some point so we don't right, know but, what they'll open but up. that's my personal guess is because that's what they've been doing so far. They've been having the the, the same layout of things on the map. So basically, they're just changing the look based on the, you know, they made it ultra winter, they made it covered in an ice, they made other stuff. But there you were know. no trains before. Sure. There were no trains. And so that makes maybe, me think. Maybe they have ha, ha, have added an Old West area that's on what I'm the map. Right. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not, thinking you go out to the uh, desert and yeah, you, yeah. you know. It's, it's, but that's what I mean by well, see, yeah, the details unfold. How uh, how exactly they are playing this out? Right. Well, well, like I said, when I see a train, uh, I think there's a difference now because that is well, a different, and it might just replace well, the. What the, if the train the doesn't work? Then we get a new engineer. Oh, okay. So, anyways. We also have a Star Wars Day sale because next week is May the fourth. Be with, with you. you. <laughs> so, um, so basically, all of the Star Wars games on Oculus are on sale, and there is a bundle deal that uh, lets you get all of them for a reduced price off of buying them each individually at full price. Very good deal if you don't own any of them. If you do own some of them, the deal starts going down, and you know. Yeah. But if you don't, it's a great deal right now. It really. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Um, we also have HTC Vive promising game-changing headsets. Plural, again. Again. At ViveCon. Right. Again. 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 We'll we'll see what happens. I mean, the Cosmos certainly changed the way we do. So, we had. Let's get down to business. And now game changing. Now people are horribly confused as to whether it's an enterprise or a consumer. <laughs> well, they said they're introducing multiple heads. You know, last time it was multiple faceplates. That really went over big. So why not multiple headsets this time with multiple faceplates? Yeah. So you have 20 variations of three different this, headsets. Yeah. That are all right. suck. Right. Exactly. None of them were great, but they made three of them with multiple plates. Guys. Or something like that. Anyways, uh, moving on because we are running low on time here. Mm -hmm. um, SideQuest now has an Android app, so you can sideload wirelessly yeah. from your Android phone. Unfortunately, I switched to iPhone, so I can't do that. Ah, I kept both going. <laughs> but in theory, I could install. The SideQuest app on my son's phone, which is my old Android phone, mm -hmm. and use that. So, well, it is kind of interesting that you can now sideload a sideloading app. Well, yeah, and that reminds me. Technically, right now you can use SideQuest to sideload SideQuest onto your Quest, and then no, what we like... do, you can just open up the SideQuest on on the quest and install stuff straight that way 
but that comes with a warning from the developer of Suicide Quest. That's not what's intended. We are not responsible. You at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> Do not come to us if you get attacked by Facebook. No. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's it's going to be a weird world there for a while, but that is kind of interesting the way they did that. Um, we'll see where that leads. Yeah. So, um, and we also have, speaking of anchor apps, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Deca Gear uh, has made their Deca Move app. On Android. Free, I believe. And it lets you use your phone in your pocket as a hip based tracker. Currently only works with 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 PC VR games. I don't know if there are any quest games that have implemented the API and SDK and all that yet. So, uh, but I would imagine that will come at some point because everyone who has tried either the the actual Decamove tracker or the Android app has said that hey, this really does work. It really does Im- improve things. So okay, so we'll see what happens. So it's uh, cool that it's there. It's not out on iPhone yet. It's only on Android, to the best of my knowledge. Everything seems hey, to run. Um, I find it ironic that when I was on Android, I was irritated that everything came out on iPhone first. Right. And now, now that I'm on iPhone. Android. <laughs> okay. iPhone. Android. I, I can't leave that. So otherwise, one of them will screw me. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. And our last bit of news: the Campfire MR headset. Have you heard of this? No, I, I okay. read about it today on the news that we were going to be presenting. <laughs> yeah, it's a Campfire, um, a San Mateo, California-based startup, emerged from stealth today with an announcement of eight million dollars in venture capital so that they can launch uh, a hardware and software platform uh, to make remote product design and collaboration easier. Uh, they have an MR headset and but by MR they don't mean like Windows MR they mean actual it, it does both AR and VR. A tracking device an accessory for smartphones to turn them into motion controllers and software to tie it all together. Mm-hmm. So, um, is uh, it basically like a Magic Leap HoloLens sort of thing? It's going to have like 92 degrees field of view, um, and you basically slide something on to the back of your phone that has a camera on it so it's like you're attaching um, a a Wiimote to basically to the back of the phone so that it can track and be tracked and then it, uh, you have the software on the phone for the actual interaction with uh, stuff or whatever. Um, and um, I believe that they're going to borrow an idea from uh, from teleconferencing and they're going to have a cross-shaped device that would sit in the middle of the room mm-hmm. that serves as an, um, a mutual center of the room anchor point. All right. So, you know, kind of like the speaker than a teleconference thing where they're in the center of the room. <laughs> right, exactly. It's going to present the, the spatial anchor uh, in that right. particular spot. Right. Um, and um, the article doesn't show or demonstrate the VR part of it, but um, speculated a visor that would to cover it up to go into 
to VR mode. Uh, that seems to be what they're all going to have to yeah. do. Is that they, they all seem to be shortening the distance between your eye and the actual lens, and then somehow or other coming up with the film that will end up covering, which we discussed years ago. I mean, this is the only... Oh, well, yeah. I mean, um, have nothing else. They don't necessarily need a, viber, uh, a visor. All they need is that um, electro, um, electrically as activated screen film uh, excuse mm -hmm. me i'm having a stuttering moment here um <laughs> that when you apply an, an electric charge it turns opaque and apply another electric charge and it turns to transparent again exactly exactly yeah. which is the way of technology part of the way of technology that apple is working on in their yeah. headset so yeah. i'm sure that's what will end up happening maybe in first quarter 2029 but in the meantime we'll get something that's thinner than the oculus quest 2 yeah, I mean, they've got that as an option for windows in houses, I believe. You know, um, you know, and it's just a, a coating that goes on the glass. You know, so basically. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, I there's a little bit more to it than that, obviously. But you know, but it's, yeah. a, it's a coating it's pretty... that goes on the glass and it's got the control stuff attached to it, obviously. But it's a lot bigger, so it makes right. more sense. It's probably a lot harder to do it on a small level without the wrinkles yeah. and yeah. all the it other could, things. Yeah. Well. yeah, but but yeah, or you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they can do now. You know, so I'm sure they'll at some point someone will have an MR headset that you just go tap and it blacks out. Right, just, just I'm tap sure. in and it done blacks out. We're just waiting for the rest of the world to catch up with yeah. what we've been waiting for. So, you know, please make what we've been asking for. Yeah. And it, takes them, <laughs> it just seems to take them way too long. You know? Or if they do, so then, yeah. then it's come out way too quickly after I just bought the last one. So they can't win and neither can we. We just go along for the ride, you know. Yeah. We, we go along for the untethered ride. Only. Yeah. And we've got Zuckerberg behind us on that. He says consumers don't want t t tethered. Uh, he's busy telling I, us what we I want. I think he might be right on that. I think so. I think that's been proven. Yes. So, anyways, on that note, that brings us to the end of our show. So, if you made it this far, we apologize and we thank you for making it this far. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. Or let your friends know because we do want to grow to the channel, even though we joke about beating them up and making them. We do want to actually grow it, obviously. Right. So anything that you'd like to give us hints about, things that you'd like to know, anything we've missed, you know, and certainly nothing on Deca Gear. Josh here is following Deca Gear like nobody else. So, <laughs> so you know, I find it interesting. And you know, um, it came out of the blue and it seems to be fulfilling on its, its, its promises so far. So, I, I, which I'm is just, always good. I'm just saying that our show, Untethered, is probably the largest show dedicated to Deca Gear. Right now on it's the not web, dedicated to the deck of gear, it's dedicated to all VR gear. Correct, with deck of gear getting up. Today. Except the cardboard, <laughs> it's not dedicated to Google Cardboard anymore. No, 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 no more. No. Done. Yeah. So, anyways, so thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your week. Have fun. Take Bye. Care.